will machines ever outsmart humans? This question has fascinated both philosophers and scientists for a long time. But how do you test the true metal of an artificial brain? Well, to answer this question, I would like to travel back in time to the year 1770, the year Wolfgang von Kempelen caused stir with the Mechanical Turk, an automaton that could play an eerily game of chess against humans. Of course, the whole thing was a fake, and it had a hidden chess master inside. But it was a start, and over the years, engineers made improvements until that day in 1997, when chess champion Gary Kasparov lost a chess match to Deep Blue, an IBM computer. Believe me when I tell you that Kasparov didn't take it well. To him, this was the dawn of a new era, one where humans would be dominated by machines and people replaced by robots. But anyway, hasn't it always been about humans being replaced by machines? Do you know that, that we used to hire people to wake people up so they wouldn't be late for work? You know, you know how they were called? The knocker-uppers. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that we used to have stores that you could go to borrow movies and rent them out. And they would charge you late fees if you didn't return them on time. <laughs> Ridiculous. Like, like what? <laughs> and, I, and I just learned that, that recently there is, there is this computer that can beat humans with a 100% success rate at rock, paper, scissors, which is actually terrifying. <laughs> anyway, some worried chess was done now that computers could beat even grandmasters. Then Kasparov did something unexpected. And he thought, what would happen if instead of competing against each other, humans and computers collaborated? From that came Center Chess in 2005, a chess tournament in which human and machine could enter together as partners. Who won? Not a grandmaster or a supercomputer, but actually an amateur using his personal laptop. This was an astonishing result. An average man with an average machine beating the best human, the best machine. How did that happen? This kid had the ability to manipulate his computer processes. And what he was actually doing is bringing together the human creativity, empathy, and intuition with the computer's ability to analyze zillions of moves. What he had was a better process. And rather than half horse, half human, this center was able to code up solutions that would amplify his average chess skills. So, with this in mind, I've come up with a call to action, which is that you should all learn how to code to amplify your human skills. Now, there are lots of messages, uh, lots of studies that say that messages are more effective when repeated. So, if on the count of three, I can get everyone to say, I should learn to code. One, two, three. <laughs> but, but, but why, 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 why should you do this thing that this Spaniard on stage just told you to do? Well, I have three reasons why. Reason number one, coding is becoming a fundamental life skill. Think for a moment about all the different tasks that people need to do throughout the day. You know, chances are that part of these tasks involve some sort of data manipulation, and it looks a lot like this, right? And this has already happened to architects, doctors, educators, artists. And in education, this means that we need to start thinking about computer science in the same way we think about science and literacy. That is a foundational subject that every child should have the opportunity to learn from primary school onwards. Number two, computers are really good tools to extend your brain power. Coding literally makes you smarter. And this is only gonna become more true as computers get faster and cheaper. There is this law in computer science that's called the Moore's Law that predicts that every year the processing capacity on average computers will double. Double every year. How much smarter does your brain get every year? You're still much smarter than a computer, but, <laughs> but for how much longer? 
immense processing power. You know, you have all these incredible partners that are often just out of our reach, we can't fully cooperate with. But imagine what you could do if you learned how to code. Which brings me to my third and final point, which is that you are lazy. <laughs> but what you don't realize is that tech people are some of the laziest people on the planet. Take me as an example. If there is a job that I need to do that takes me 10 seconds every day, I will spend the whole week coding a solution that will save me five seconds off of that. <laughs> it's long past time to, start, uh, to stop talking about the rise of the machines. They have risen. Artificial intelligence is here. It flies the airplanes we travel in, it trades our stocks, it finds us matches on our dating sites, it finds us deals in hotel rooms. Instead, it's time to tackle these centuries problems through intelligence augmentation. Human and machine in cooperation, together, supercharging our thinking, our innovation, our performance. And as it turns out, it doesn't have to be human versus machine after all. Instead, it needs to be about man-machine cooperation, leveraging the best of both to build the optimal performance. I'd like to close now with one of my favorite quotes by someone who would have totally been a programmer if computers had existed when he was alive. Henry Ford once said, if you have a hard job to do, give it to a lazy person, and he will find an easier way to do it. <laughs> Thank you.